Hello everyone, this is JavaMonk, and welcome to episode 93 of the Survival Series. Today we're gonna work, we're gonna finish a mega project. And since this is the countdown to episode 100, pretty much everything I'm doing now, I'm doing here is gonna be, is gonna really decide the fate on whether certain unfinished things are gonna be now or never. And in, in the case of things like the tree farm, never. But today, we're gonna handle one of those NOW projects. And I'll reveal that NOW project after some poetry. From the Poetry Machine. Space is limited. This is still a haiku, and that floats around here. And that floats around here, I suppose. Okay, limericks, uh, limericks actually seem to be a little bit funnier. So. There was an old fellow named Gus to start giving his to start giving this house a spring clean because its feet stuck and found it was perfectly true. Okay, that also makes absolutely zero sense. Again, one of these days. There's there's a few episodes left until episode 100 and there is actually a poem. There is actually enough for episode 100 itself. So one of these days, the limericks and haikus will make sense. But I guess, in according to the in in the words of the that guy from Lord of the Rings, I, my his name is leaving my mind right now. But today is not that day. Aragon, that's what his name is. Welcome to Trim Castle, or uh, at least my recreation of it. So. I built this thing back in episode 59, I think? Yeah, and this is... This place really hasn't gotten much love ever since I built it. Like, there's empty interior rooms here, and staircases that lead to nowhere. Although, this is the site of the infamous Quicksilver. Or should I say, Quantum Quicksilver. Because, believe it or not, this horse kind of exists in two places at once. Here's Quicksilver 1, and Quicksilver 2, and by the way, that leather hanging out, that is actually a, a llama that's, that's just suffocated itself. That's Quicksilver number 1. Quicksilver number 2 is right there, in the mansion. So, like, what in the world? They have exactly the same stats, exactly the same horse armor, they are exactly the same horse that exists in two places at once. So, Trim Castle is a pretty extraordinary place, which mean, which makes it that much more kind of... And also it was the site of the Great Cat Massacre of episode 84. So, that that makes this place kind of kind of sad that it was abandoned for so long. Until today. Today, we're gonna put an interior to this, tri to this castle, and this interior was actually brought to you by my little brother, the same person who designed all the quest makers offices in the adventure map. He went in here and totally revamped the interior of Trim Castle. So I'm actually I mean, I'm just gonna give you a tour of the of each piece of interior as I'm building it, because the actual tour of the entire interior would take up an entire episode. And then there wouldn't be episode time for me actually building it. Okay, this is what we're building. This is what you can see from the exterior. I'm not going to include some of these things, so there's really no point in touring everything. What I am going to tour, however, is what I did to make this world a lot more lag-friendly. Because you see, I am from this world, so I gave my little brother direct access to the YouTube survival series world. I just basically gave him the world. He built this trim castle, and now I'm here to repli essentially replicate what he built. Now, this means that the only part of the world I actually need is trim castle. So, everything else doesn't really need to be here. So what I did was I went, I looked up chunk pruning, and essentially destroyed all and deleted all of the world except for the region file that contains Trim Castle. And that's just the center, that's the 00 region file. 
Legion. Okay, quick warning. Don't play with Legion. Don't play with Legion files unless you really, really know what you're doing. I do not. So this was kind of a. I'm happy I made some backups because this was lucky. But anyways, the zero zero Legion file is huge. This is the cutoff point from the center of the world all the way out to here. So let's see. It ended up slicing up the mob, the mob farm island, which I'm not too sad about. But most critically, it sliced up the villager island, and it sliced up the mansion. So first off, I gave I gave my little brother the access to the backup of the world as of up as of episode 52. So, some of the latest things have not been, some of the latest introductions to the mansion have not been put in. But, check this out. Here's a cross section of the mansion, and there is the mansion as it would spawn if you used the seed of this world. So, kind of a different mansion, different place. It's, the whole place is different. It's kind of insane. So, yeah. Region files are not fun. Well, they, they can be fun, but they are not toys. Essentially, my bulk storage room is gone. In the 00 region file, I have no storage. So, if this were to happen in the actual survival series world, I would not be able to recover, because there is no meaningful storage of any items in this region file. Which is good, because we don't need to store anything in here. We're here to build Trim Castle. So, I think the first thing we should do is actually, um, yeah, let's start with in the entrance hall, and then work our way into the banquet hall. This, by the way, is nowhere near the amount of resources needed to do this total revamping. <clears throat> so, in the process of totally revamping, I am going to explain some of the things that I'm actually keeping and sticking around. So... This entrance hall was actually not changed all that much in the redesign. And, but however, in the redesign, these wall torches were changed. And, in my opinion, these wall torches are better than if these were replaced with cobblestone. So, these wall torches are stain. However, these armor stands are going up on top of chests. Assuming I can... There we go. Okay. And in fact, whoop, make sure not to do that. And on top of that, I'm also in shit. Come on, there we go, individual chest. So, how do you, I guess that's how you do it. Yeah, so now that there's armor stands on top of the chest, in the redesign, there's also paintings all over the place. So, I guess this is a chance to, I guess, do some painting. Um, hmm. How do you actually break paintings? <laughs> this is actually kind of embarrassing. I have no idea how paintings work. It appears that all the villagers are loving these fountains that I just now put in. So this here is kind of like a tavern-ish place. So it, yeah, this guy turned into a got a profession from one of the blocks that I just placed in here. That villager actually got its profession from the smoker that's sitting here. And up here, whoop, did not break the item frame. I'm thinking of putting like one of my first tools because I know there's a chest somewhere nearby that has like my first, I don't know, like an iron axe. So there we go. Excuse me, villager. So. All the villagers seem to be congregating congregating over here, but soon this trim castle is going to end up being almost like a more legitimate village than the actual village bre villager breeders, which, you know what, I'm fine with. So next up, what I'm building are actually fountains on the other side, so it's basically the same design as these fountains here, and actually, I'm going to show you kind of part of the process for this. So, excuse me, villager. Having so many villagers and animals sitting around in the castle has kind of uh, kind of been a nuisance, but it's totally fine. It is 
it is kind of becoming their home anyway. So at this point, I've, I've done the picture copying, the taking screenshots and just, well, using screenshots to build. So here I'm just essentially building exactly the same thing as over there. And lighting is a huge, huge issue. So, so yeah, there are there are plenty of cases like you need end rods at the end of the at the end of the water fountain. You need glowstone at the base of the water because there's not enough light to actually reach in the table. So it's kind of ridiculous. Be really nice if there was actually a. It, it'd be really nice if there was a way to I don't know, make invisible lights. That'd be really cool. Then again, that's kind of what a mushroom island biome is. In this tool chest, I have my first iron axe plus a trident. So, actually, I don't think this is my first iron axe. Might have gotten from gotten it from a vindicator or something. But either way, I got plenty of options of things to put into that item frame. I'm thinking actually putting in this trident because, well, tridents are awesome. And also, I could call it like a uh, Maybe call it the first fork. First fork. There we go. And then that could just go in the item frame and never be used again. I am, as this villager is my witness, here, hereby is the consecration of the first fork. There we go. And cover it up. All right. So now we have pretty much all of this first floor, at least the entry hall, complete. I'm just gonna put a bunch of paintings all over the f all over the walls, and then that would fully complete this whole this entire banquet hall. Let's just slap something on here. That's a that's a cool painting, but maybe maybe it should be centered. So here I am actually in the creative mode world to show you that. Yes, there, I am putting, going to put this stuff on the table itself. And also, I blocked up the, those fountains, and I should probably block up these as well. So, this pipeline here is something that I'm not going to put into the survival version. And same with this button that says, Worship the Cats. Because this is my little brother's first redstone contraption. And oh, one of his very first self-designed redstone contraptions, which is pretty awesome. Except, I'm not a fan of the redstone go extending outside the castle, so I'm not putting it in. So here's what, and in fact, it, it actually doesn't work at the moment. So here is how he explained that it should work. You push the button, and it drops a cat from, spoilers, from the second floor up here. Pretend there's a bunch of cats here. The cats are, one cat is then dropped down this water chute where the salmon is. The salmon just randomly spawned there. Cat falls down in here and goes along this pipeline. Meanwhile, there are, there are some ceremonial clothes being dispensed down to you. These leather, leather clothes. And from there, you're essentially supposed to, I guess, run around and wave your hand around, showing the fact that you're raising the cats. At which point, that cat goes back up the back up the water stream, and you're then supposed to put the... And then these doors open up, which reveal hoppers that you can then put your leather armor into, and then this clock brings that leather armor up the glass elevator and into... and back into this original dropper. So, it's a really neat system. Very much not compact. This... Whoop, I guess it, this kind of reminds me of the loop de loop yeah, it's kind of these. This is kind of spaghetti, spaghetti redstone. But you know what? It works most mostly ish. And I'm not building it in survival. Pretty much, pretty much only for the reason that I don't feel like having redstone outside the castle. The exterior of the castle should stay big and ominous. So now that the banquet <laughs> hall is pretty much done now. Let's now move on to one of these side rooms. The, so this side room, on the, still on the first floor, has the kitchen, and this, this is again in the, in the Trim Castle world that my little brother built. He then made this cage for 
a guest named Mr. Suspicious, which supposedly cannot harm you. I'm... And apparently, that is true. I moved the ghast back in, I think, episode 89. And, yeah, I am not doing that again. Nuh uh, not happening. So, instead of. But I do like the idea of having Mr. Suspicious. Which is misspelled, I think. So, instead of moving a ghast, I'm thinking just building this cage for Mr. Suspicious. Maybe even opening this part up to make it a glass wall. And just have it an empty cage. Just completely empty. And since it's named Mr. Suspicious, you have no idea what what's going on with, mis with Mr. Suspicious. Because, well, there, there's not going to be anything in this cage. I think that would be quite, in quite interesting. And otherwise, this area of the... This area of the room is relative, pretty much empty. So I think having the cage of Mr. Suspicious would be quite interesting. Behold the cage of Mr. Suspicious. Do not tap on the glass. Tap, 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 tap. Yeah, there's actually nothing inside this cage, but it is dark enough for mobs to spawn in that cage. So maybe there might be something in, in here eventually, but... Nothing that's actually gonna be able to hurt the villagers or anything like that. Behold, Quicksilver the Amazing Horse that can jump up on top of chandeliers. Yeah, this is... Yeah, very childish. This place is like a sauna to the villagers, isn't it? Okay, we now have the Cage of Mr. Suspicious. On the other side of the banquet hall, like over here... Yeah, over here. We actually have a bedroom, and what my little brother did is convert this into an actual legitimate bedroom, so that the vill any villagers that come nearby can actually climb inside the beds and sleep in them, because that's a thing that villagers can do in 1.14, which is actually why the villager breeder and villager trading hall stopped working. Here's a view from the camera account because this is a very intricate place. I just installed the bedroom for all the villagers, and you know what? I'm okay with having daylight sensors stick out of the, stick out of the wall because they are to light up these redstone lamps inside here. Now the scaffolding is to place in beds for all the different villagers. So this is all... Hmm. I need to fix this. I'm gonna need to fix that hallway. So here we go. Placing beds, lots and lots and lots of beds, to essentially register this Trim Castle as a legitimate village. So, I'm just going to place the first smallish set of beds, and then we can climb up here to show you this amazingly intricate place that my little brother calls the Court Room. And, man, this place is awesome. So, building this in, building this in survival... I can only imagine how difficult it was in creative, and building it in survival, I was pretty much just building layer by layer, because this is insane. So, in here I'm supposed to have a, a villager, just intentionally trap a villager, who is essentially the court professional, I guess. And then, over here is the accuser's stand. So, this, so here I'm supposed to trap a zombie. So, cool. I'll figure out how to do that. And then up here is the judges and lawyers stand. So take a look at this. Uh, in here, to get up to the judges stand, you have to climb up these super rickety staircases, and the judge is supposed to be an iron golem. So I'm going to gather some iron blocks so that I can get an iron golem. And here's a bell and a jukebox. So cool. Oh, and this bell came from one of, came from yet another nearby village that I kind of raided. Yeah, and here is the lawyer's lawyer's stand. I think you're putting some item frames all around the wall here to, with pieces of paper in them, so that the like the lawyer has a bunch of documents. Quick progress update: I now actually fa got I gathered two villagers 
turned one of them into a librarian, so they are now the court president. So if you mouse over them, it'll show that they got the name tag, the court president. So, up here we have the lawyer, and the lawyer is actually a is actually a, a leather worker, I think, or something like that. Whatever the guy that uses a loom. So, I'm gonna real quick name him Lawyer. So, he is indeed a lawyer. You can't really trade with these villagers because they have no workstation to refill their trades. So, it's not worth it to actually trade with them. Now, as for the judge. The judge is an iron golem. So, here we go. You, you can just go right up here on the step, on the, like, right up here in the judge's stand. Boom. Ju Wait, he's not accused. The judge. There we go. Ah, eh, crap, I just used up that name tag. Let me get a th another name tag so I can get a zombie up here. Maybe. Assuming he, he manages to escape the grasp of the judge. How handy that I put an anvil right here in the lawyer's stand. Accused. Oh, and I need to put some documents near the near the lawyer's stand. There we go. Bring in some documents behind the lawyer. There we go. So now we have a full go full blown court case. We got everything except for the accused, which I guess we can just put in later. Like you know what? Let's put him in off cam. I'm gonna put him in off camera, just like I put in these two villagers, because I figured you guys don't wanna watch me move move villagers and mobs around. I did plenty of that in several episodes ago. Okay, that was way easier than I expected. So here is accused the zombie, and as long as you don't get there's there's really no way for accused to actually reach you or to actually get out of the get out of that cage. So, here we have the courtroom case. I guess, villagers versus zombie? Okay, let's finish putting in all these... Let's put in all the beds. I was wondering why there was meowing noises coming from the fish farm. Huh. Turns out a bunch of cats from Trim Castle actually teleported down here. So, before I go building up the pet room, I might as well transport all these cats over to Trim Castle. Okay, I think the first floor is completely done now. We have the courtroom of villagers. We have, actually, villagers are now picking workstations left and right. There's a couple villagers that found some cauldrons in the kitchen area. I'm not changing the kitchen area. And in fact, my little brother did not either. All that really was added was Mr. Suspicious. So... Now we have the pet floor. This is the floor that has a bunch of cats, a bunch of dogs, and a bunch of parrots. So, here's the thing. This, is, this floor was originally ridiculously empty. But now, this is actually the biggest addition that my little brother made to Trim Castle. Was right here in the pet room. So, let's, let's build that up. And then I'll show you what's going on. Okay, several hours later, we now have the Cat Pyramid, which, by the way, actually comes right up to this staircase here. And over here is actually going to be the Llama Room, but first up, the Cat Pyramid. This is going to be, well, a pyramid for all of these cats. So, Mr. Villager, sorry, you are not invited because only players are able to do stuff like this. So... It actually requires you to crouch into one block in order to even access the place, and also to get out. And then... Reels. Rules. Must go into lolcat language. Read all item frames. Well, a golden carrot. We got the... Uh, cat protection. Whatever that is. Yeah. We're in lolcat language. And... Here is an item frame collection of every single item that my little brother and I agreed are uh, funny when you convert to when you convert to the lolcat language. So, yes, I used an I used an elytra for this for this showcase, and also chiseled stone bricks. Stone cutter is awesome. Okay, and I I also used a trident because, well, at this point the the drown farm is actually producing more tridents than I can use, 
And then, in this place, you have a cat door and a human door. You actually can't access the human door, but you can crouch down to be the size of a cat. So, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Become a cat. So, how did you get in? I'm thinking of putting in a couple cats here, right underneath these signs. And what's kind of crazy about this place is that you actually can't get out the cat door, but you can get out the human door. So you can only go in the cat door, and, and can only go out the human door. You also have this place that also has a human door and a cat door. And this, is, I guess, is kind of a bedroom-ish place. I'm going to put a bunch of cats here. I have like 50 cats that I need to put into this one pyramid. This is kind of insane. And then over here, I think this is my favorite part. The all humans go in here for passport check. So, you step on the pressure plate, it'll, you get the door opening for you. And then you walk into this area here. This area was for me trying to get out after I went in. So this is indeed snow layers. And here's more stuff, red, semi redstone related, that are pretty funny when you convert to when you convert to log cat. I'm thinking putting a bunch of cats in here as well. And then to get out of this place, you have to reach over and press a button, kind of reach over the door to press a button. And then you're actually trapped by these trapdoors. So the only way out at that point is to throw your magic balls like that. And there you go. And then as for getting out of this pyramid, that is also kind of kind of insane. So what you have to do, you have to jump up onto this trapdoor, crouch, and slide underneath the slab. Now, I am crouching. And actually, I'm in perpetual crouch mode, even though I'm not holding shift. So now you need to close this trapdoor, open this trapdoor, and go up the slabs until you pop out. So, yeah, sorry villager, you can't do that. Ah, oh, boy, moving these cats is going to be quite fun. So now that the unoccupied floor is now has no longer has cats in it, all the cats are now in this pyramid. Now is now what's left are the parrots and the dogs. The parrots, I might go into the jungle at some point and get some more parrots, but the dogs, there's way too few of them. So let's get some let's get some puppies here. Because who doesn't like puppies? This is Minecraft, you don't have to clean up after them. Okay, now we have at least a few more dogs. So, of which four of them are named. So, so now we can build up the dog area, which is actually, the dog area is like a mini castle inside of a castle. With this being the bigger castle, the dogs get their own castle. So it seems, it seems the cat pyramid was kind of designed, so just a, I'm guessing the beh uh, behind the inspiration behind my little brother's design here. So I have a hunch that the cat pyramid was designed based on the fact that ancient Egyptians used to worship cats and Egyptians built pyramids, therefore cats should have a pyramid. Now the dogs get a castle, complete with cannons. This will be fun, especially since I get to compact some redstone. And this is the dog castle. So, the mini castle inside of a castle. And unfortunately, I did actually have to re... I guess, redesign the staircase here to go looping around and sliding right past this wall because over here is going to be the llama room. So, just like I had to kind of reformat the hallway here from the staircase, I had to do the same thing over here. So... Inside the dog hall, inside the dog castle, we have a moat and some waterlogged trapdoors as kind of a drawbridge. So, better draw a bridge. Over here, I have some signs marking where I should put a dog, and also I have this kind of meat tavern ish place. So, it's, it is like a mini trim castle inside of trim castle. And then we, we can go up the stairs and into the throne room, which has Plank the dog, who is now going to have a yellow collar. And then over here is actually, nope, not there, over here, there's some more winding, winding passageways, and here we actually have some redstone lamps that only turn on during the daytime. So 
here we go. We got some dog beds here. We got some we got more lamps, more dog beds here, and yeah, it's super cozy in here. So all I gotta do is move a bunch of dogs in here. And I'm gonna need to get some more baby puppies bred up because there really isn't there aren't enough dogs. I don't have enough dogs right now to actually man this castle because there's also gonna be a dog here and two dogs, one here and one here. Now what these dogs are going to be doing is manning the cannons. The cannons being this. There you go. If there was no lag, then that would be super awesome. And since it's levers here, I can essentially just... This is essentially like a machine gun. So there. That is... Those are the cannons that two dogs are going to be manning. And who would do a better job at manning the cannons than two baby puppies? They're gonna grow up, so it's gonna be less hilarious later on, but right now, this is, I think this is pretty cool. So, now all we gotta do is get a bunch more dogs, and bring them into the dog castle. Welcome to the llama bedroom, which is mysteriously empty because all the llamas are just scattered all over the castle. So, so this room is intended for llamas and any other animals that happen to be here. So we have some furnaces, we have a door which goes to an actual awesome looking bathroom. So my little brother designed all of this and I just built it pretty much block by block because I don't do furniture very well, but this is a pretty cool toilet. Plus we have, whoop, plus we have crooked stairs because this is a very tight space. And here are two sinks. Plus there's a lamp up here. And I guess this could be a lava lamp. Oop. Let's get down. And then, so that's the first floor of the bedroom. And then there's more beds up here. I should prob- I'm thinking maybe putting green beds in this spot here. And I better put those beds in soon because this entire area is very, very dark. I may have actually artificially brightened the screen because it is dark enough for mobs to spawn. And if I switch off these redstone, switch off those redstone torches, it goes into pitch darkness. So I better put those beds in before mobs start spawning here. Come here, go away. Come here. Come here, go away. Okay. I found two extra dogs in the banquet hall, so I'm putting them as guards to the dog castle. This one's named Catfish, and the last one, named Go Away, is going to be the other guard. So, let's just... Okay, it doesn't seem to want to come any closer, so at this point, I use the fishing rod, because, well, fishing rods are pretty much the best way to drag animals around. Especially those that don't want don't to move anywhere. There we go. Two dogs, catfish, and go away. It, it's kind of perfect that go away the dog is, a, is the entrance guard to the castle. Oh, it looks like the two... The two puppies that were... That are supposed to man the guns uh, have almost fully grown up now. So some... Ex so we have Puddle the dog as the entrance over here. We have Meow over here. Kind of... Also, at, on the other side of the moat, we have, I guess, the king dog plank. Plus, we have. Plus, in the gun, in the cannons department, we have commander dude. It kind of sounds like a Bill and Ted, like, like a Bill and Ted reference. Somebody could be saying, How, "How's it going there, commander dude?" And here's the parrot room. So. Yeah, this is going to be significantly more difficult to put the parrots in. And therefore, I'm definitely not going to show that on camera because that's just going to be overly frustrating and quite boring, in my opinion. Now, here's a button that was actually in the original design. It's Feed the Parrots. And it essentially just powers this... I don't know why there's a bump here. Why is there a bump there? I don't know. But anyway, it powers this dispenser, which dispenses some seeds. Now, here's the thing. The dispenser will actually dis- I don't necessarily need a dispenser to 
shove items through walls, but I'm using a dispenser because I have way too many of those, and I'm, I don't feel like going back to the mansion and crafting droppers, because I'm out of droppers in the redstone shulker box. So here's what's going to happen. All you gotta do, all you gotta do is press the button, and seeds will pop out. So there we go. In this case, more pumpkin seeds, cause I have way too many. Pu I've more pumpkins than I know what to do with. So, yeah, now I gotta move the parrots up there, up to each of those places that have signs. And once again, I'm. Let's see, how many parrots do I actually have? I've got three, six parrots here, and one on the roof. So that's seven parrots, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six places to put them. Maybe the one on the roof can stay. I'll just put the six parrots into this room. Once again, scaffolding comes in to save the day. Oop. Okay. But the thing that does not come to save the day is the fact that parrots can ride on your shoulder. Because, good grief. It'd be kind of... I know it sounds kind of cool, but it'd be it'd be nice to have a tool that you can use to like maybe without harming the parrots, just swap them out of the air so that they stop flying. Like without harming them, that would be that would just be fantastic. But uh, I guess that's not gonna happen. So there we go, first parrot is in place, and now the last parrot, Polly two, Polly spelled backwards. And the reason it's Polly 2 is because the original Polly got in the way of an arrow as I was trying to shoot something. This was this happened way, way back in, I don't know, episode 30, 31, something like that. Back when I first got these parrots. Up the scaffolding we go. Yeah, scaffolding didn't exist back then. It, it was dark times indeed. Okay, and now all we need to do is get this, get this guy off my shoulder. There we go. Please get yourself down to the ground and sit there. Okay, sweet. And I think this calls for a parrot dance party. So let's just break all the scaffolding. I'm gonna get a jukebox over here. So I'm flying back with a jukebox and a music disc, and look what I find a wandering trader. And it appears that the leads have broken. So it. Must have spawned before I flew off to the mansion, which means these two wandering traders are mine. And now they will never despawn. By the way, what are you trading? Purple coral, beetroot seeds, sand, dandelions, red dye, and podzo. Ooh. Okay. I don't have really have much of a use for those, but okay. Uh oh. Well, that's not good. So looks like the leads did not break. And now he's caravanning some other llamas. And now he's running at a million miles an hour. Okay, either way, let's get this let's get this party started. And now the the final part of this whole Trim Castle project is gonna be putting an aquarium on the roof. It's a small aquarium, so I think it would be fun to see if I can do it within the time of Big Giant Circles' No Party Like a Mojang Party. Because, after all, these pa and I'm- in fact, I'm gonna put this into this jukebox, and these parrots are gonna start dancing. Watch this. Oh, seriously? Why aren't the parrots dancing? Seriously, what in the world? I thought parrots danced to music. I mean, that's kind of the whole point of parrots, is that, is that they would dance along to music in the jukebox. Oh, there we go. Now that's it.
Alright. That was an utter catastrophe of a time lapse because this world is laggy. Oh my goodness. How is it I'm still even able to play? Like, seriously, blocks aren't even registering the fact that they're supposed to be broken. Like, I broke this ender chest like two hours ago, right? Something like that. And I'm probably drowned by now. The last step to making it an aquarium is to fill it with fish. So, let's just grab some... I'll just grab a bucket, two buckets of salmon. And I think I'll go grab a bucket of cod. Maybe even bring in a couple tropical fish if I can find that coral reef again. Okay, here we go. Tridents are awesome. I keep saying that, but it's never not true. And... Let's go. Bucket of cod. So I also pulled out the bucket of tropical fish that I caught from... I don't know, episode 63, I think? Something like that? So let's release the two salmon, the cod, and the tropical fish. There we go! All four fish are now in the aquarium, so now it's pretty much a legitimate aquarium. All we gotta do now is pop up here and close it off. Bam! Done! Okay! It's, so there's there's a lovely little aquarium. Let me pull that music disc out of the let me pull that music disc out of the jukebox. I think that's gonna do it for this episode. So this episode was full of teeny tiny clips of me building rather large structures. So we have the almighty cat pyramid, complete with item frames and one block tall entrance. We have the parrot room, which has whoops, which has all the which has a bunch of per perches for parrots, plus a button that I can use to feed the parrots. We have the dog castle, who's guard guarded by go away and catfish. And inside we have the bit of a tavern. We got various dogs in the guarding the place, and we even have cannons that can fire at the or arrow cannons that can fire at the cat pyramid or the or the parrot or the parrot room. Can't talk today. Okay, need to flick up that lever. There we go. Over here we have a villager that keeps opening the store for some reason. Multiple villagers apparently. Huh. Even though I'll, I'll show you what the villager place looks like. So this is the llama room, complete with over here we have a working bathroom, plus upstairs we have sinks, like this, and it appears that these villagers are really, really liking the sinks. They're apparently plumbers. And we also have more beds up here for the llamas, and that's just the llama, that's just the pet floor. And here's, uh, here's the staircase. Going upstairs we have an aquarium. We have an aquarium complete with live fish and more villagers on the roof for some reason. Downstairs, let's see which downstairs this leads to. Okay, downstairs we have the cage of Mr. Suspicious and apparently this. Uh oh, looks like the banquet hall's not lit up properly. So down here we still have the kitchen that was actually unchanged. However. Over here, we ha and also we have the observer system, which was unchanged. But over here, we have the villager wing. So, we have a bunch of villager, villager beds, villager places, lots of villagers just hanging out. And complete with a villager courtroom. With, we, we have the jury, we have, we have the court president over here, who apparently can't decide whether he wants to be a librarian or a cleric. I guess it just depends on his mood. Whoop. Here, the accused is a zombie. So, there we go. The judge is an iron golem. And the lawyer is also a villager. Except this villager is a leather worker. I'm thinking maybe even... Tra I was originally thinking maybe trapping a wandering trader 
because there was a wandering trader that spawned on the roof. But then I was reminded that wandering traders despawn. So that would be a bad idea. So that's the that's the lawyer's stand. And I think I can climb up on the anvil. Nope. But the judge's stand has a lectern and a bell. So it can so the judge can order can ask for order in the court. And this is how you get to the judge's stand. So that's the villager wing. So let's just get down to the banquet hall, maybe. Okay, that's downstairs. So now let's go up one of these side staircases and go up to the banquet hall. There we go. Whoa. Looks like we got a mob party going on here. And like your arrows. <laughs> Wonderful combination. Uh, yeah. Ah, oh, crap. Oh, looks like we got we got zombie infestation as well. Maybe I should put a nine golem inside here. No, but then he'd attack a creeper and the creeper would blow up. Okay, I'm out of here. Let's uh, hold on. Okay, I super lit up the banquet hall or covered it in carpet, so nothing can ever spawn here ever again. So there we go. Nope. Uh, Mr. Zombie Villager. Uh, yeah, I splashed some weakness potions and gave them golden apples, so hopefully this guy will convert before he realizes that one of his zombie villager friends just turned back into a villager. Hopefully he figures that out. So, Trim Castle, everybody. The home to all of my pets. Amazing decorations for my little brother. And Quicksilver, the quantum superposition horse. So... Thank you for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please let me know. And I will see you next time. That is, This is one unfinished project complete. Checked off the list. We will visit here as part of a recap now. But the project is now officially complete.